I know you're down there, and I know you can probably hear me. Stop stealing from me, you wee bastards. Oh, what's that? It looks like a couple of beady little eyes. I see you there. Yeah, you better run. Go run and tell your king that I'm coming after him, and I'll have his head. Run, you wee bastards. Run. OK. I got a strategy here for you. This is what we're going to do. See, we're going to visualize the thing before we do it. And this is an important uh, thing to do, really, when you want to accomplish any goal. Just to strategize what you got to do in the most dire way if you want this thing to really work out for yourself. You got to visualize the thing before you do it. So anybody that's got any real great skill at anything, they're always thinking about doing it before they do it. We're not that far away from Camp Harry. Maybe I have to show you three pieces of clothing, three, three articles of clothing I want to show you. Follow me. So I don't know if you really believe me or not, but the reality of things is on three separate occasions, three separate occasions, I've gone to the trap after I've heard it. Well, in the night I can hear sometimes. Approach the traps. Got three little shirts, let me show you. Let's go get them little buggers. And by the way, thanks for the light. Here we go. So, standard military training. Crawling through sand and earth. Basically, you're going to get very dirty. Enjoy. For once in your life, you will enjoy being filthy. Absolutely, positively filthy. But you can breathe. Yeah. Sometimes they respond. The rocks. The sound is an interesting thing. It passes through uh, solids faster than air. What sometimes occurs is the sound passes through the rock and reverberates back. That's why I say rocks talk. I suppose you could even begin to make music if you're creative. Hello? Oh, let's go eat. Remember that beaver that stole my can opener? in here somewhere. There it is. Found it. I get to eat. I call this my dream stone. I do so because every single night I'm given a dream with its location. This was the spot. The following day I go and dig yeah. it out of the earth. With this stone I get to eat and not die out here. I'm going to put this in my mailbox and then I'll be able to pull food out of my mailbox and eat. I get cans of food, I get peanut butter, whatnot. The mailbox was given to me by a friend who's passed on now, but his name was Jasper. And he always told me, Son, when I pass on to your side, I'll always give you a helping hand when I can. So don't worry there, I'll be there for you. It's because of his mailbox and these dreams, because of Jasper in particular, that I thrive and survive out here. You might call it a miracle, but I call it my dream stone. I think it's quite appropriate. I've hung on to this, and of course I have cans now. Looks like beans.
Good old can opener. I had this friend. His name was Vlad. Vladimir. Vladimir was an interesting fellow. Believe it or not, he had six fingers on uh, both hands. He was a unique individual. Uh, his toes, uh, I don't recall if this was the same characteristic, but his hands, six fingers, and he had to have uh, his grandmother made him uh, uh, knitted gloves. And, you know, because then who, who, who sells six finger gloves? Oh, come on, you bastard. Come and get it, you little buggers. I like to find their entrance and exit points. I'm referring to the little people, of course. I like to yell down in there and put a little bit of fear into their hearts. Why? Because they're mischievous little thieves. This is one of the reasons why I set traps. I want them to pay attention that I'm not messing around. Can you hear me down there? Am I being loud enough for your small wee ears? I'm a little tired of the thieving. Come on out of there. I know you can hear me. And I see your footprints leading down in there. I know this is one of your places that you get into the earth. Come on out, you cowardly little. I wonder if they heard me. You know, when Jasper was still alive, he taught me a lot of things. One of the things he helped instill in my heart was the fact that uh, one needs to know self-defense. He taught me a little boxing. Being Irish, he was a boxer. And he'd say, you know, when they're trying to pick on your son, don't be afraid of them. Show them that you're a man. Pull off your gloves. Make some fists. And you got to move. Got to move with them. So once in a while, I will do such uh, maneuvers. Slow motion. Perhaps, if need be, a bit of a roll. Like that. Taught me how to fight. He was a good man. Oh, this one's buried real good. I got it. You ever had a bag of fruit that you left laying around and it rotted two weeks later and you had fruit flies all over your, your house? It's horrible, isn't it? Difficult to get rid of fruit flies. This is one's present self and a timeline to the future to future self. Now, if our future self could communicate with our present self, you could imagine benefits such as future self warning, present self, Monday morning, do not leave the house at 7.55, leave at 8, and avoid the accident. Present self would be grateful, would not perhaps get the broken arm one might have had. However, the flaw in this entire scenario is that if future self continually clues in present self as to the pitfalls and dangers that lay ahead, well, what this does to present self 
is deny present self the learning, the life lessons that we all glean when we fail. Failing is vital to learning. So, the idea of a future self assisting a present self is absolutely ridiculous and the whole topic should be dropped like a rotten bag of smelly tomatoes infested with fruit flies. Fruit flies? Fruit flies are absolutely horrible. Fruit flies? Fruit flies will destroy your life. This piece here, I had to, uh, what do you call it when you uh, chisel, not chisel, uh, whittle. Vlad gave me this chess set. Something I would like to demonstrate for you would be uh, attaching a mask to your face. Okay, so obviously you must have a mask. If you don't, you're crazy. Okay, here we go. Very simple. Okay. So now, you have a mask with which you can breathe. You see, in the event that you ever are in circumstances where you have to breathe fresh air, like in the city, acquire a mask, breathe properly. So, when you uh, have a mask, obviously you will breathe better, you will not die like the other rats in the city. <laughs> Looks like I got another one without the body. Look what we have here. See that? <coughs> what do you think that is? That there belongs to someone small, very small. My old friend Jasper was from Ireland. I'll leave that there. Jasper's dead now, but he he'd always say, "Be aware of the small folk, but the crafty. They'll come into the chicken house and steal the eggs." They go into the pantry and take the sugar. They'll get into the cabinets and get your whiskey. They'll even take your shoelaces. But one thing that they covet most of all is peanut butter. That's why I bait my traps with peanut butter. And once in a while, I'm lucky enough to get a jar in the mailbox. And things have gone missing in my camp, never to be seen again. I have a hatchet that went missing. I rarely lose anything. I had an uncle one time relate an interesting story to me about when he visited a jungle. And in that jungle, the people there were experiencing problems with the monkeys coming into their village and taking things, destroying things. They were being vandals. So they had to deal with this problem. So one of the individuals there had the ingenious idea of taking a jar and fastening it to a board so it couldn't be moved and dropping a coin in the bottom. See, monkeys enjoy and love shiny things. So they'd place the coin in the bottom. The monkey would come by, stick his little hand in there, grab the coin, 
and would attempt to hold on, but could not release his hand. So essentially the monkey would be trapped. A little bit like the way people hold on to things, trapping themselves. But when you let go of that thing, you can. You should set yourself free from that thing. You know, I just had a thought. I go to fly swatter. I think I'm gonna get the fly swatter and take it down with me right now and challenge these little buggers to a duel. All right now, now down there. I know you can hear me. At this point, I certainly hope that when you hear my voice down there, it echoes through your chambers. It makes your bones tingle with fear. I wonder if, I wonder if they can even hear me at this one. They will leave my voice, man, huh? Beep. Oi, it's me again. How you been doing? The team and monkeys. Perhaps you'd like to come out and have a portrait with me so we tell the world that you're real, huh? Come on out. I don't have any sort of weapon with me, not at all. Not at all. I'll be honest with you. Why not? I'm honest. I'm an honest sort. Okay, so next time you come out, this hole, when I'm... I'll, and I'll be... I guarantee I'll be waiting for you. When you come out next time, I'm going to squash you. I'm going to swat you like a little fly that you are. you imagine that? You little twerps. I'm going to swat your life. I'm going to take your life with me. I'm going to take your life. What in the world does that mean? I'm so combobbled. One in the gut. One in the nose, one in the gut, one in the nose. Got to remain civilized somehow. Oh, if that wasn't a tight spot. Ooh. I like to explore these nooks and crannies as much as I can when I come across them. Believe you me, there are plenty of them around here. The reason why I want to get these nooks and crannies is I want to find an entrance that I can fit into to find out where these buggers live. I'm talking about the small people, of course. Yeah, I was told by Jasper that he knew very well. These people that steal your stuff, they're very much like us. They're human form, much smaller, but the characteristic we share is greed. The greed they possess in their hearts is unlike anything human. And of course they don't give back. They take. Oh, how I'd love to get a hold of one of them. Get some answers. I'd say it's time we get out of here. Do something else, huh? Oh. I haven't had this in a while. Ravioli. Those living in the city will undoubtedly be encouraged to purchase at some point in the near future. Perhaps a breathing device such as this. Now I'm going to demonstrate something for you because I care. And when one cares, 
you share information. Now, the information I'm going to partake with you, is that the right word? The information I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to give you a demonstration, how about that? Keep it simple. Look, never go into the desert by any means and jump on the bushes. Well, this is more like a tree, but never run full speed and jump into a bush. You probably would never want to do that. Given the circumstances and what is required for a proper demonstration, I'll do just that. Okay, I need to see the bush. Where's the bush? There's the bush. Nope, it's that one. I have no idea what's behind that bush. Okay, now, what have we learned from this? There's some thorns on me, but you know what? I'm no worse for the wear. I haven't harmed the bush. Have a look. I do have some thorns on me. They're not, they're not that big. But, for the sake of really hitting home the point, I think it might be worth a second look from this vantage point over here. I'm going to run from that direction. Hey, you're not filming me. Okay. I was thinking twice about it, you know. Is that a really smart thing to do? Is... You ought not dare me to do it. What if I get hurt? What if I what if I get what if I get you know, thorns all over my face and whatnot? Bet you like to see that, huh? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? What the f am I talking about? I'm not gonna jump into thorns. That's stupid. I could roll through them. You like to see that? No, I don't want to damage the cactus. What am I talking about? Look. Look at this. You ever laid down with some thorn bushes? You ever laid with the bushes? The thorn bushes. The thorns are on there, they're probably two inches long. Perhaps the smart folks like to come out here and take home with them some tarns. You know, what could you do with tarns if you're the size of a, a meatloaf, you know? Wouldn't that be interesting? What are they doing with the torrents? They are, you know, without a shout of doubt, they're getting torrents for something. Oh, you know what I would do if I was them? I would, I would probably roast marshmallows with these if I was them. You know, who doesn't like marshmallows? Look at the size of them. Woo! Woo! I gotta show you what Jasper found. Well, I guess what I mean is what I found. You see what I mean? Now this is the last little bugger. A little bit of dried blood on him here. We saw that already. But these ones, I think it was more like Probably caught him about there, and he was able to pull free, you know. Two those funny little sweaters, all caught in the same trap. He might even call me the the butcher. No, not the butcher. I haven't butchered a one. He might even call me the uh, the little buggers. Probably that tall, you know. What did you say? Ten. 10 inches there. Small buggers. 20, probably 24 centimeters. Running around like to do. What do you think they weigh? A couple pounds, their bodies. Hard to say. Can you imagine that coming down? The fly swatter. Basically, that would be your full chest. Be your full chest. Can you imagine that? Ouch. <laughs> What do you think of that? When they bully you, son, when they push you around, 
Punch him right in the nose on the eyes. Go. A lot of good rocks here. Let's go shoot some targets, huh? Line up some cans and shoot them. Knock them over. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's go for that last one. Ah, not bad. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? This hole here, large enough for my entire arm to fit down. Uh, yeah, so, I don't believe I, this most likely belongs to dogs. Uh, small foxes or, uh, goes fairly deep. No small people here, that's for sure. This might be the stupidest thing in the world. But, I will demonstrate how the proper crown real sand. You might feel like an alligator or a crocodile, but that is the whole point. To keep your profile very low. To keep your profile very, very low and crawling, avoid Enemy fire! But do not forget to breathe! Very important to breathe! Mmm. Beans. Special delivery. Mmm. I really enjoy peace and quiet. Cities don't provide that. The sound of silence. It's a beautiful sound. Listen to that. Did you hear that? That was one of my traps. Follow me. Got a trap over, over, over this way. Come on. We're gonna scare the bastards. Oi! You bastards! I heard you spring me trap! Find out what they did. Oh, look at there. Look at there. Got me peanut butter. They found it. I see you've gotten away with a bunch of peanut butter this time. Oi! You wee folks down there. Come on out and I'll scare you with me fork! Come on out! I know you can hear me down there! Come on out! Hey! Who are they laughing at me? They're laughing! You wee bastards! Hey! Now this has gone too far! How are we gonna catch these buggers? This don't even work anymore! Ooh, what I do to what I do to get in there! You know what? Your day is coming, and it's coming soon. I guarantee it. Why are they laughing again? Hey! Oh! Watch out! You know what I'm gonna do, you little bastards? I'm gonna seal your doom. This is what I'm gonna start doing. It just occurred to me. I'm gonna lock him in there. They're not strong enough to push it out. See you get out of that one, huh? Let's see you get out of that. Go back and finish the beans, what do you say? Always remember to take your feet. Whether it's digging holes in the desert or talking to little folks, you know you got to do something with your life. Something's got to occupy your time. Prime spot. Let's fill it up for them. Enjoy that. I just had an idea. I'm going to take two cans 
put a string between them. Used to do that as a kid, maybe. Talk to your friend around the corner or, you know, lower one end down in their hole. Yeah, I like that idea. All I need to do is find the perfect hole to lower this down into. Let's do this. Yeah. I have 30 feet of rope. All right, I'm gonna talk through and we'll see if you can hear me here. Hey, are y'all sleeping down there? I'm coming to get ya. Do you hear me? I'm coming to get ya. I think it works. I think it works just fine. Put a can down as deep as we can go. Talk to these little individuals. I feel kind of inspired to go this way. Let's head up this way. Okay, I've just lowered this other can down as far as I could. The hole goes diagonally downward. Maybe I dropped because it pulled itself. Anyway, maybe I shouldn't let them hear me. I'm coming in after you. Can you hear me? Hey, you little buggers, can you hear me? Oh, oh, there was a pool there. Is that a pool? Oh, they're pulling on it. They're pulling on it. There's something down there. Let's have a little tug of war then. See how hard you can pull it. I know you're down there. Pull as hard as you can. Oh, they got it. They got it. Oh, thorns, I hit thorns. Oh, did you see that? They pulled it out of my hand. Oh, goodness. I don't even know what to tell them anymore. What the hell? You know, when you consider the fact that many uh, aspects are of, of our very reality are hidden from us, denied, to us, you may want to watch out the fireplace. Uh, what was? Oh yes, the denial of the reality of things. The reality of things. That very thing. Uh, the, you have a large fly on your camera. <laughs> no, it's in there. This might be a good opportunity to... I got him. Very good. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yes, the reality itself, in all its forms, is what creates your perception. Now your perception of your reality is based upon simple principles. They are this. The exposure to your environment, your exposure to mass media, the reality of many, if not all events, major events in the history of mankind. My point being, there it is again. Same one, I must not have killed him. Get him, stay there. I'll get him. Oh, let's get him away. Okay, so to summarize this, I would say, question, reality, all aspects of your life. Such things as fluoridated water, uh, <laughs> food that is absolutely and Really not food. Can you imagine? Would you put a shovel full of dirt into your gas, uh, into your car? Would you do this? No. Then why do you shovel shit into your body? Anyhow, let's kill some flies. What do you think? Some flies, let's kill them. Or maybe not. You ever have the dream where 
you know, are playing in the backyard with four or five of your mates, you're playing ball back there. And then one of you might have heard something. Sounded like the tinker of a small bell. You all think. And you stop playing. You all listen. You hear it again. And it's approaching. By this time you all wonder, what in the, what is that? And the bell's getting a little bit louder, a little bit louder. And you all realize, you're all filled with some kind of fear. And it's a real fear that something's coming. Not someone, something. And you stand there. And you all literally become like stone, you can't move. You barely even turn your head as he approaches. And all of a sudden he's in your midst. He starts looking you in the eyes. You know what? This little bugger. Not so little, is he? Quite large, actually. But he looks in your eyes. He's looking for something. See, this person is looking for something deep, deep down in your eyes. Nice and close, you look. And there you stand, paralyzed, looking at this. Looking for something. He's looking for the fear he is. Any fear you might show him. And with that fear, he'll give you a reason to take you away. this time, weren't you? Weren't you? So he's gone, and you all resume playing. But you know, when the person comes around with the bell, He's looking for that glimpse of fear in your eye. Remember, don't show him any fear. Here we go, one, two, three. Ah, horrible, and pathetic. There was a good bowler. Ah! Whoa! One! <laughs> kind of a stupid game anyway. Oh, how about that? Oh, we not let these buggers have a way in or out, huh? There's more holes around here. This is a game that I like to call man versus tire, basically. You must, uh, being the man, you must take control of the tire, but be on the edge of control, you know, so that you maintain a fine line between full control and loss completely. If you lose control completely, you lose to the tire. That is basically the game in a nutshell. How about we try it, huh? Watch this. So first, we give the tire probably two second head start. 
One, two, okay, now it begins. Maintain control. So that was exactly as I described. I barely maintained control. And at the point of complete loss of control, I grabbed the wheel. That is one point for man. Okay, two points. Round three. Sometimes you play until you're too hurt. Remember, remain in control. Okay, three, zero. Human winning. Okay, I love corners. You know why? Very dynamic. Very, very, very dead. Must keep it going. Beautiful. Marvelous. I give myself five points. Game over. I win. Zero for the tire. I win. Extra bonus round. Okay, I lost control of the tire. The tire finally has one point. Phew! Five, one. Maintain. Two points for tire. I lost control. Five, two. Okay. Whew. That's great. That is great. I think I give that one to the tire. Five, three. I say time to stop playing. Imagine the workout I just had. Might make you a man. Or maybe not. Might make you sore. Burn rubber and don't eat too much dust while playing. And obviously, don't uh, hurt yourself too much. But of course, the workout and the fun uh, perhaps has only begun because we have an enormous hill to climb with our tire. Enjoy. I need to go find my stone. I believe it's that way. Right over here. What? There's a hole in the spot. My stone. My stone. Who got my stone? Hang on. This isn't right. What? Now that's a first. You got are you kidding me? My stone is gone? Well that means my mailbox isn't worth a damn. Who in the who in the heck took my stone? It it's always been in the hole. Always. This isn't making me very happy. In fact, I'm very angry. The rock's gone, there's no food. I need to break something. What am I gonna I'll break that? Ah! Damn boss! Hey now, ruin my life. I'm gonna come and ruin yours. I am completely at my wit's end. Completely. Why are you ruining my life? Why are you ruining my life? I'm gonna seal their doom. You've sealed mine. I'll seal yours.
You know that saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade? Well, what about when life gives you nothing? What are you supposed to make with nothing? What? What in the world? My box is back. My precious box. Oh, Jasper, thank you. Thank you. And I feel I'm at my lowest. My absolute lowest. He's there. Ah! 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 Oh! 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 You know who did this? Who is the Wii Brothers? The Wii Brothers! That's it! I've had it! I've had enough! Oh, you little buggers. When you encounter a very large bear in the woods, first thing you should do run like a madman. You have two legs, like I do, you see, one, two legs. If you have two legs, you run. Because uh, a big bear, you know, it's good advice, no? Run. Imminent danger, you know, like that. <laughs> 